Was state capture perfected in the Free State? Here to tell us is the Democratic Alliance's provincial leader, Roy Jankelsen. Welcome, Roy. Thank you, Chris. Um, it's nice to speak to you from a very, very chilly Free State. It snowed in Lesotho and the chilly breeze is coming down and um, has hit us from this morning. May we talk about the legacy left by former Premier Ace Magashulu? Chris, yes. Um, a lot of people say that Jacob Zuma perfected state capture, but state capture, I believe, was perfected in the free state. Ace Mahashule, as chairperson of the free state, um, as a, of the ANC in the free state for many years, controlled the not only the political party, the governing party, but also the other levers of power in the province. And we've had various premiers in the free state, but until Ace Mahashule became premier, they were merely puppets of the national ANC government while Mahashule was controlling the administration on the ground. And I'll explain how this happened in the free state. The ANC through their National Democratic Revolution, have a policy of CADA deployment, which was accepted by their National um, Work Committee in 1997. And the, in terms of the CADA deployment policy, all positions um, of power in government have to be filled by ANC CADAs, and it's still like that today. But the person who controls those redeployment committees, and that was that's what the committees are called, um, that deploy these cadres into senior positions in government. Um, and these committees sit parallel to employment committees within government, and those committees get the instruction from the redeployment committee. So whoever controls these committees within the ANC actually controls the provincial government because you can have a premier governing the province, but the person who controls the committee actually makes the senior appointments within the province. And it's within the administration that the lucrative contracts are allocated and that tenders are distributed to various individuals and companies. So whoever controls the party within the province actually controls the administration and the provincial government, and the premier is basically irrelevant. And for many years, Ace Mahashule was in control of the party by being chairperson of the ANC in the Free State, and through that he had control of the administration and was able to, through his cadres, control not only the administration of government, but also these lucrative contracts and tenders that were allocated in the free state. And that's why, for example, we had the issue of the Frieda project, the Frieda dairy project, which was one of the first Gupta link projects where state ca which, which highlighted the whole issue of state capture. And um, I always am of the opinion that state capture was perfected in the free state, that the textbook for state capture, if I could put it that way, was written in the Free State, and Jacob Zuma was mainly a student who read that textbook and implemented it at a national level, obviously using companies and individuals, including um, the Gupta brothers. But they started their empire in the Free State, and Ace Mahashuli's legacy is still fell today because we know that corruption makes poor people poorer, and our free state is much poorer, poorer as a result of this, and it's going to be very difficult for our current premier who took over from Sisi and Tombella last year to actually um, turn this province around, even though he might want to do so. But the legacy of Ace Mahashuli is felt within the governing party in the free state. The free state is extremely divided. Um, between the rapid economic transformation, the RET faction, which is run by Ace Mahashule, and the other faction, which is now the current Premier Dukwana faction. And unfortunately, this um, 
division within the governing party also manifests itself through the cadres in the administration. So when you have an unstable governing party and your senior positions, your employees in government are cadres of that party, then obviously the instability within the party will manifest in our administrations at provincial government level, but also within our municipalities. And that's why we also have the current service delivery problems within the free state because people are busy fighting political battles within the administration and service delivery comes second to that. And a lot of the battles today are also linked to um, lucrative tenders and contracts and the control of those because whoever's in power wants to have their turn to eat. So what is the state of service delivery in the free state at the moment? Well, we see it firstly at provincial, at provincial level. And um, when I talk about service delivery, I also want to look at the impact that it has on our people and on the provincial economy. And just as an example of how this has impacted on the people, um, 62% of our people in the free state are living in poverty. And the ANC... Um, In the legislature, the ANC members and the MECs and Premier often brag about the fact that we have a million people on social grants in the province. And we believe that social grants are an important safety net for vulnerable people in society. But it shouldn't be the main source of income for most people. We only have a population of 2.9 million people, but a million of those people are dependent on social grants. Um, So we have a very serious dependency problem in the free state where the provincial government regards the people of the province as beneficiaries instead of customers. And because they regard it as beneficiaries and not customers, um, the provincial government tries to control them also during elections um, through these grants that that they're implementing. Um, The free state has a 34.4% unemployment rate. If you take the add the expanded definition, which is which includes disgruntled um, work seekers, then it goes up to 40%. So our our province is is very impoverished. Um, And then if one looks at service delivery, um, one of the biggest issues in the free state that also affects our economy negatively is the condition of our provincial roads. And we do have one of the biggest roads networks in the country with over 45,000 kilometers of roads. And unfortunately, only 6% of those roads are actually in a good condition, 27% of them in a fair condition, 33% are poor, and another 33% are extremely poor. So this has a huge impact on our economy because all goods and services require sound roads, infrastructure to be able to move backwards and forwards across the province. And although we have some um, decent national roads running through the province, as soon as one moves off of these national roads onto our provincial roads, then you can see the the decay that has set in um, within the province. And obviously... We also a rural economy that depends to a large degree on agriculture, and um, this is having a huge impact on our local economies, on agriculture, but also on tourism. You know, towns like Roosendaal, which a couple of years ago were thriving tourist towns because of the inability to access them because of the poor roads. Um, towns like Roosendaal have become island communities. And tourism has shut down completely. Many people in the town and surrounding areas are unemployed. And um, it's, it's very sad to see this in the, in the province. And obviously agriculture as well. Um, our farmers need to transport their goods backwards and forwards. They need services from government. Police vehicles are often damaged because of the poor roads. Our mobile clinics and ambulance services are often unable to access communities because of the poor roads, and it's deteriorating every day. And our provincial government does have an option, and that is that Sunroll, 
the South African National Roads Agency take over some of these roads. And obviously, we're pushing really hard for this to take place. But up until now, the provincial government, for some or other reason, which we're still trying to fathom, um, are very reluctant to hand over these roads to Sonra. We, we've got a, a commitment from the Premier of the Free State that they are negotiating with Sonra, but they were negotiating last year already, and, and we're waiting for actual results on the ground. Because if Sonra can take over some of these more strategic provincial roads, then obviously there will be more provincial funds are available to, to re-gravel some of our um, secondary roads and to grade a lot of our secondary roads, which the agricultural sector in our province depends on. And even along the Lesotho border, you know, we need a good access road there for our security forces to drive on to secure that border. And that road is also impassable for police vehicles and even, even the South African Defence Force vehicles who deployed there. So the roads infrastructure is probably the one of the biggest issues. And then at municipal level, I think it's well known that our municipalities in the free state are unable to deliver many of the basic services like water, sanitation. Most of our sewage plants in the free state have collapsed completely. The towns like Jagersfontein, where we had the tailings dam disaster, and the the governing party are using that as an excuse why people haven't received services. Well, I've visited that town on a number of occasions, even before the disaster. And just before the disaster, I was told by people in the community that they hadn't had access to regular and safe water for up to seven years. And that's the case in many towns in the Free State, that water systems have collapsed. Paris, for example, which is also... A tourist town in the Free State, many people from Gauteng travel down to Paris for weekends. It's on the Val River. There are a lot of um, tourist activities that people can participate in there. But also as a result of the poor municipality and the inability of that municipality to, to manage their finances and manage their infrastructure, Paris is often set without water. And now we actually have cholera um, outbreak in, in Paris, which is a serious issue for us. And it's sad because Paris is sitting on the Val River, but many of the residents don't have water. So it's not a problem of of water resources. It's a it, The issue is with the management of resources. And, you know, the list goes on. Um, recently, Ratings Africa indicated that two of the worst performing municipalities in the country were from the Free State, and one is the only metro in the Free State, which got 24 out of 100 um, in terms of the point scoring, and Machabeng, which is the largest local municipality in the Free State outside of the metro, which includes Valcom and surrounding towns, which got 11 out of 100 in terms of that scoring, and that's basically for the ability to deliver services and manage the administration and finances. Um, so the list goes on, and that's that obviously affects our province because economic activity takes place within municipalities. Um, it takes place at local level, and this is impacting on the ability of the provincial government to create an enabling environment for investment to come into the province, and obviously it's also imp impacting on our, in, our very high and increasing unemployment figures in the province. Talking about unemployment, uh, how bad is crime uh, in the province at the moment? Some of our the recent crime statistics indicate that some of the some of the crimes have decreased, like murder, etc. That that has decreased somewhat, but I think it's not as a result of police action because. Um, our spokesperson in the provincial legislature on who, who deals with police roads and transport often visits police stations. And um, the indication that we get is that um, many of our police stations are very under-resourced. Our vehicles are sitting in um, yards where, where they, they're broken and there's an inability to fix them. Um, personnel at 
at our police stations are struggling with high workloads. Our detectives have huge amounts of case dockets that they that they're working with. Um, some police stations are struggling with electricity, obviously due to load shedding, but there's also no alternative in place. Um, and personnel is a very serious problem. But vehicles, especially relating to stock theft, is one of the most serious um, issues for the South African police services in the province. And stock theft is one of the more serious crimes that is affecting our local economy and especially our farming community because stock theft costs this province um, over a billion rand a year. Um, that's what it's costing our, our agricultural sector. And our stock theft units are very under-resourced as well in terms of personnel and vehicles. And then the whole criminal justice system has an impact on this, obviously, because um, where the dockets do reach the courts, um, the cases are often thrown out and um, it's, it's, it's very demoralizing for people who are victims of crime to have to go and sit for hours in courts and many of them are business people. They don't have time to go and sit for hours in court and then the case is delayed or the case is thrown out. Often these delays are for months at a time and continuously and it has the effect that a lot of crimes aren't reported, especially stock theft. Obviously, we encourage people to report crimes that we get our statistics right. But a lot of, for a lot of people, it's just not worth going to report these crimes and have to go through um, tedious processes at a police station and then have to go and sit in court if, in fact, it ever gets to court because the conviction rates are very low. Um, regarding stock theft, and that also impacts on the reporting rates. So the the crime statistics in the free state in instances like stock theft, etc., um, might look as if they low, but in fact they are much higher due to the to the lack of reporting of many crimes. And I think many crimes are like that. Rape, for example, if people aren't treated with dignity or are victims of such crimes in police stations. Um, they're going to be reluctant to actually report these crimes. So there are low reporting rates regarding many crimes in the province. And then obviously um, crimes like drug-related drug crimes, um, driving under the influence of alcohol, those depend to a large degree on police action. So when those crime stats come down, it means the police aren't doing their work. So you want those kinds of crimes to actually or the statistics to actually increase, so because then you know that you know the police are doing their work because there there are certain crimes that um, depend on the police action, but you know the biggest deterrent to crime is the knowledge that if you commit a crime, you will be detected, you will be convicted, and you will be punished. So the police will find you you will be successfully prosecuted by the courts and you will be punished by correctional services. And our whole criminal justice system in South Africa has collapsed and that's why criminals um, think they can get away with crime and that's why crime is increasing in our country. I just want to take you across the border to Lesotho where a motion was tabled in Parliament recently to reclaim the entire free state. What was that about? Um, yes, there, there, there are people in Lesotho who think that um, the free state should actually belong to them. This motion was tabled in Parliament by the Basutu Convention movement that has one seat out of 120 in that Parliament. And um, the, the whole thing is, is very far-fetched because if one compares Lesotho to the free state and not even the rest of South Africa. The free state is one of the smaller provinces in the country with 2.9 million people. But Lesotho only has a population of 2 million. It's a much smaller province than, than the free state. The free state is also four times larger than Lesotho. The free state is 130,000 square kilometers. And then there are also the legal aspects. You know, the Cairo Convention or the Cairo Declaration in 1964 
why the African Union took the decision that they're going to accept the colonial borders as they stood during the independence era. And um, as far as that is concerned, it will be very difficult for Lesotho to have a legal claim to South Africa. They might have a historical claim, one one must accept that. But um, then if we are to go and, ex- you know, delve into and accept the historical claims of various communities and ethnic groups across um, not only Southern Africa, but Africa, um, we're going to end up with with a large amount of, of chaos because the borders as we see them in Africa are as a result of the treaty that was drawn up in the 19th century between the then superpowers, the colonial powers and those borders, many of which stand today. Despite the grim picture that we now have of the state of the Free State Province, there must be some positive developments in the pipeline. Yes, um, Chris, there are a lot of positive things that the Free State has to offer. And, um, you know, I don't want to put people off because of a couple of negative things, because these things that I've spoken about, you'll see across the country, not just in the Free State Province. But the Free State Province has a lot to offer our country, and we're very positive about the future of the, pre, of the Free Province. Um, we've seen a development of the gas in um, um, the Machabing municipal region, which is around Virginia in the Free State, close to Belcom. Um, uh, there's a lot of investment in that mining at the moment, um, which is very positive for the province. I think the province might be the center of the energy sector going forward in the free state with the gas deposits that were found there and that are now being being mined. So um, that's very positive for the free state. And then our agricultural sector. I mean, we remain the bread basket of South Africa, and I don't think anyone will contest that. Um, 56% of sunflowers are produced in the free state, 22% of sorghum, um, 45% of maize, as the country's maize is produced in the free state, 16% of wheat, 40% of potatoes. So, you know, we've, we are actually carrying the country. It's just unfortunate that we're not doing our own agri-processing, and that's another industry which I think we need to develop in the province and, you know, a future government under a different party will obviously be able to to use that. It, one of the things we need to do, obviously, is to fix our roads infrastructure first. But we send a lot of our products to other provinces where they're packed, and then we buy them back from them afterwards, which is not just a problem of the free state. I think our country does that as well. We send a lot of our um, raw materials to other countries and then import them in in vehicles and various other things. But we would like to see an increase in agri-processing in the free state. Recently, I visited Vesselsbron, and there's a company there that's erecting the largest grain storage facility in Southern Africa. So obviously, there are people in the free state and companies that have confidence in our province's ability to grow and to utilize our resources. So we we are very confident of the future of the of the province. Um, we have a huge amount of tourist potential. So when we fix our roads, and I say when we do, because it's just a matter of time, we will fix this free state. And, and we as the DA are obviously going to be part of that solution. But we have a lot of tourist potential in the province. We have wonderful people. We are the center of South Africa. We border with six other provinces and with Lesotho. Um, so we have that international border as well. Um, we we have a lot of educational institutions. Besides the many colleges in various towns across the province, we have two universities, the Central University of Technology, the University of the Free State, more than many other small provinces across the province. So um, we're very confident that with all these resources, natural resources, human resources, um, that we have the potential to become the growth center of South Africa. And many people say the Western Cape is that center at the moment. Well, 
we are the central province and I'm convinced that the free state, and this is, sounds very ambitious, but that the free state can become the Dubai of South Africa. Well, on that positive note, we are going to say goodbye to Roy Yankilson, the Democratic Alliance provincial leader in the free state. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Chris. It was wonderful chatting to you and um, all the viewers this morning. <laughs>